Thank you very much. So um, I gather that uh, this, uh, the way this is being done is I'm going to do the stuff that normally staff would do first as well. Is that right? That is correct, Chris. The floor is yours. Okay, so thank you. you. Thank you. So um, if you could go to the next slide, please. So here's the, here's the history of the, uh, of the proposal. Uh, all of the activity uh, with this proposal has occurred in the, in the current year. Please go ahead. So this is staff's understanding of the uh, proposal. Basically, uh, <clears throat> those who have um, uh, obtained an 8.2 transfer would be exempted from the, uh, from the waiting period. Uh, and uh, the remainder of the 60 months would continue to apply to the MNA transferred space after the transfer is complete. Uh, and there's an example uh, provided there to clarify that. Next slide, please. Uh, so staff and uh, general counsel appear to have no uh, concerns with either implementability or legal issues. And the resource impact appears to be minimal with implementation, uh, implementation uh, being possible within three months after ratification by the board. Next slide, please. Um, this is the, uh, the problem statement and basically it derived uh, from a policy experience report that identified that the status of 8.2 transfers uh, with regards to either being or not being exempt uh, from the 60 month uh, waiting uh, period restriction was, uh, was ambiguous. And uh, so this proposal seeks to clarify that the 8.2 transfers uh, <clears throat> would be exempted. Sorry. Go ahead. Next slide, please. So the uh, the change is uh, quite small to the text of the existing text of section 4.1.8, and you can see it there in the, in the red font, basically making it explicit that uh, eligibility for transfer would not apply to section 8.2 transfers. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Uh, despite uh, a few attempts I've made to generate discussion on PPML, the volume of feedback has been very low. There have been two or three vocal community members who have expressed concern that the proposed exception could lead to fraud because it's easy for someone to kind of <laughs> incorporate a company and create some sort of a sham 8.2 transfer in order to create an exception. On the other hand, the counter argument is that people who want to engage in this conduct are going to do it anyway. Uh, and uh, we're better off to have the exemption be explicit in order to ensure that people don't try and use other methods to bypass it that could reduce directory accuracy. So that <clears throat> is kind of the, the, the two opposite points of view that have been expressed, but as I say, by a very small minority of uh, people. Most people have not said much of anything about this policy. Uh, next slide, please. So since this is now in recommended draft state, it is possible that uh, the AC would recommend adoption at this point. So obviously we would like to make sure that the community has an opportunity to voice uh, and any other opinions or concerns it might have with regards to this uh, RDP. So uh, with that, I guess I'll turn it back to you, uh, Mr. Chair, and ask if, if you yes. would ask people if there are any questions or comments. So thank you, Chris. Um, so first, if you have any comments or questions about this, either click the raise hand button uh, to be put in queue to speak or start typing your question in the Q&A. Um, this could be potentially the last time this policy is before the community. So even feedback such as in favor or against is very useful uh, to the AC. Uh, so hopefully, as Chris said, we'd had some little feedback, but hopefully we can turn up now. I don't see anyone though giving any feedback. We'll give it just a second. 
So after this, there will also be a, uh, a poll taken, uh, and anyone who's, I'll explain how that worked in a second, but that will be another opportunity to give feedback. And so I see that Gary Geeson of Central Logic has says he supports the policy as proposed. Thank you, Gary, for that feedback. <coughs> Any other feedback? Okay, we'll give a, again, just because it's a virtual, I'll give a 20 second warning here to uh, last call. If we don't have any hands raised or comments by that, we will close uh, the comments. We see that Dave Farmer, University of Minnesota, I support the policy as written. Give it a few more seconds. Okay. If there are no further comments, we are going to close the queues. So we will not take any uh, further comments in the Q&A or the uh, raised hand, assuming I've not missed any. If you haven't seen Beverly, have I missed any? We're we're clear. Okay. I would then thank Chris Tassett for the uh, presentation. And then we would all give a, a lovely clap here. Um, and we will now go to a poll. So uh, this poll is open to anyone that can hear or is participating in this meeting. Uh, and it's popped up in there. So the question is, are you in favor or against recommended draft policy, Aaron 2020-1 as written? So please either indicate in the poll that's popped up in favor or against. If for some reason you're not able to use the poll, we know some people who come in on the web cannot use the Q&A section, just say in favor or against, and we will ensure they are counted. So we'll give a 30 seconds for everyone to make their decision. Okay, last call. All right, we will close the poll now and I'll ask uh, Beverly if you could give us or uh, staff if you could give us the results when you tabulated. This might take a second. At the close of the poll, there were 118 in attendance, 53 voted in favor and three against. Thank you. That feedback will be provided to the advisory council for their consideration. Thank you all for your input on this. So we will truck right along to Aaron 2020-2, reinstatement of organizations removed from the waitlist by implementation of Aaron 2019-16. And we'll ask Alyssa Moore to give the uh, presentation. 